Although we still believe that society has the right to punish, what we do in the name of punishment has changed substantially. As a society, we've become gradually uncomfortable with inflicting physical painful punishments on offenders, and as these punishments were discarded, imprisonment was used as the substitute. However, we still employ capital punishment, at least in some states. Inside prison, we've only relatively recently abandoned physical punishments as a method of control, at least formally, but that's not to say that prisons are not injurious. The Eighth Amendment protects everyone from cruel and unusual punishment. Punishments that are rarely, if ever, used thus become unusual if used against one individual or a group. Civilization is evolving, and punishments considered acceptable in the past are no longer acceptable in this country. A yardstick for all punishments is to test against public conscience. Any punishment that is excessive to its purpose or disproportionately administered is considered wrong. There must be a purpose for punishment. Generally, it's to deter crime. Thus, we should administer only the amount necessary to do so. Some distinguish between stigmatizing shaming and reintegrative shaming. The first is a rejection of the individual and has negative effects. The second is only a rejection of the person's behavior and creates a healthier relationship between the individual and his or her community. What sets capital punishment apart from all other punishments is the quality of irrevocability. This type of punishment leaves no way to correct a mistake. For this reason, some believe that no mortal should have the power to inflict capital punishment because there's no way to guarantee that mistakes won't be made. The growing number of innocent men and women who came perilously close to being executed indicates that we have an imperfect system. Generating a revenue stream from offenders seems to be going on all over the country by states and local entities in pretrial, probation, jail, and prison settings. The reason it's morally questionable is that the offender population is, by and large, poor, so charging for correctional services or release options increases the differential sentencing between those who can pay and those who can't. In many cases, poverty, and not the seriousness of the crime, is linked to how long someone is enmeshed in the criminal justice system.